Simpson, Community Manager for Hornbill. I'd like to welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar, where we'll be looking, getting an insight into um, the key steps to self-service with Veronica Oliver, Hornbill Application Consultant. Just to inform you, Delegate Audio will remain re muted throughout the presentations just to facilitate flow and keep to time. If you have any questions during the session, please type into the GoToMeeting question facility on the right-hand side of your screen. We will collate all the questions and answer them at the end of the presentation. I'd just like to thank you all for taking the time to attend. I'll now pass you over to Veronica. Thanks, Anna. Um, I'm going to start the actual uh, slideshow now. I hope you can all see it fine. And here we go. So, as Anna already mentioned, we're going to cover the key steps of the self-service portal. Um, and I was going to talk about it as to as the best way to set this up. Now, the first half of the session, I plan to make it in such a way that even if you don't use the latest version of ITSM, or in fact, if you don't use ITSM, but only using perhaps a facilities management desk or an HR desk, you still be able to get information out of this because it's still going to be relevant to you. Now, the next half of the session, I plan to cover actual technical details, so I'm going to dive into ITSM. and going to um, cover that um, in more detail. Okay. So let's just start it off with um, a nice little kind of um, um, quote. Success is all about having more options, and more options the more the success. Now, if you think about your self-service portal, it is basically another option of, or choice you offer to your customers. Um, the more choices you offer to them, the more likely they will succeed in your business. Um, and you will receive you will be perceived as a flexible and customer focused service provider. Now we all agree that obviously we want to keep our business as um, cutting edge as possible, um, and this is just going to be another kind of um, card in your deck of cards, so to speak, um, offering service to your clients. Um, now many people already use that service in their everyday lives, so they're not going to find this a very new thing for them, and they will probably feel comfortable with it. If you think about it. Most of us do our shopping online um, for food, clothes, electronics, and so on. Some of us even do the banking online. They subscribe to providers of, for phones or even choose their gas and electricity provider um, or buy tickets online to go to the movies and so on and so forth. So why not offer them a service? For example, be it your IT or maybe your HR or even secretary or any other service that you might offer online. So it really makes sense to invest time and effort into this. Um, and the benefits normally of implementing such a self-service portal far outweighs the cost of implementation. That is provided that you put effort in and consider your plan for the implementation itself. So what are the benefits? Um, well, you really need to think about what the benefits are obviously going to be, because unless there's enough benefits, there's going to be not much point of you implementing this. Um, so you really need to give it a thumb as to why would you invest your time and effort and even your money implementing the self-service portal. Um, so for this, you really need to think about what is the driving force behind creating your portal. Um, and first of all, you need to think about the benefits to the customers. So um, you would want, really want to, want to put yourself in the shoes of your customers. How would they benefit from it? Um, would they find it easier to raise requests or incidents in this particular scenario? Um, more often than you find that customers would want to lift the phone and just easy to talk to you and you f they find that a bit more kind of friendly approach. So you will obviously have to think about offering this service to them as um, accessible as possible so they feel comfortable about logging online and actually raising tickets themselves as opposed to lifting the receiver and actually trying to talk to you. Um, they also need to think about it, whether you would think that they would benefit from seeing their updates in one place for all their tickets, or even having some relevant feedback information to you, or them um, getting information back from you um, regarding of what tickets they've raised. Now, this is just really offers a choice to the customers, because obviously you're not going to do away with the emailing, or even the phone, or possibly even person coming in to you to raise um, issues or requests. But as I mentioned earlier, it is really important to give them a choice. 
Um, so what are the benefits to the service desk? Well, that's another thing to bear in mind, that more than likely you'd like to reduce demand on your support desk. Imagine the amount of hours that they must spend receiving the phone calls and then looking up the tickets, then telling the customers where they are, giving them the updates, and so on and so forth. So that in itself will reduce um, a great amount of time that they have to spend over the phone or even emailing customers. You will be able to extend the service hours. Bear in mind, this internet is usually 24-7. Um, people can raise their tickets even during the night if that's how they wish. They might be operating a 24-7 service themselves anyway, and this will just be another way of them being able to reach you even if you might be out of hours. At least the tickets will be logged and they know that it's um, already being raised with you. It's also somewhat an automation of services. Um, in a sense that rather than um, your analyst in your service desk having to actually type in all the information or glean it out from emails, they can actually get all the, this information already put into the self service desk and that actually would then raise um, a ticket with all the information put in there without you having to do anything about it. Um, it will make your staff more effective as well. Obviously, once the ticket is raised, they can then go in there and then start working on it already as opposed to having to wait for a phone call and so on and so forth. Um, and most importantly, you'll be able to collect relevant information from your customers the first time rather than having to get your analyst call back to the customer, actually, what was this problem about or, or what exactly do you mean by this or by that? If you actually create your questions correctly on the wizards for the self-service portal, then that should be able to drive the answers from your clients and therefore get the right amount of information the first time. Now, the um, also very important thing to bear in mind is your business case as to what the benefits to the business. Obviously, if the business doesn't see any benefits in implementing a self-service portal or they find that implementing one will be far more costly than it's worth, they're not likely to want to go with this solution. So you really need to bear in mind whether it will actually reduce cost. It should do but it's still something to bear in mind. Um, you should be able to save money by making the service desk more efficient, as I already described for the benefits in the service desk. Um, and also, not by least, you'll be able to offer better customer satisfaction. The chances are, as I said, more choices you can offer to customers, the more likely they will be keeping with you and be happier customers for you in the future. And then finally, it's an up-to-date technology to keep up with the trends. As I mentioned, people are already used to using on internet sites to book services and request information and um, even base you know, problems for their own personal um, sort of life. So it makes sense to bring it to business as well. Um, you also have to get a buy-in from your customers. So you will probably want to bear in mind marketing to make sure that they are aware of this service and they know how to use it. That brings me to the next little quote. This one is just a customer that probably calls in to the desk. I need to send a letter to Saudi Arabia. I've typed it on Word. How do I keep press to convert it to Arabic? Now, you will probably find that there will be some clients who may not be computer literate. So although it's an endearing quote that demonstrates the importance of pitching your service port at the right audience level, you really must remember that when you're actually writing up your uh, wizards, you have to think how your customers would think. It's no good implementing a wizard full of interesting, fun, um, technical language. If they don't understand it, they will be put off and unlikely to use the service. So it's a key importance to bear in mind. So there's some more considerations to um, think through from the customer's perspective. So really, try to put yourself into their shoes and really try to see how um, the portal and its offerings uh, are going to be from their perspective. Um, consider your audience and the use of language and how easy it is to use. If it's not in e easy to understand and it's easy to use, are they going to likely to use it? Not very likely. Also need to think about, are you going to um, talk to external or, or internal customers? With external customers, maybe you will have to be a bit more generic and then certain um, sort of key business information you won't be able to pass on. However, if it's an internal customers and maybe it's an IT company already working in, chances are you'll be able to use a bit more techno language in there without causing much problems. 
Um, final thing to um, bear in mind is although you're creating all these services, you need to then manage it because people will have to subscribe to these services that you offer to them. So you need to bear in mind who are you going to subscribe to this service, who can receive it and who will be able to then raise tickets from there. Then there's the service desk considerations. Um, first of all, you'll need to define your service portfolio because that's where it's going to be your driving force behind the self-service portal wizards and, and therefore the services you offer to your clients. So you really need to think about it whether you can actually define a service portfolio or any service offerings and can you actually define what they are um, and what services you offer. Are they repeatable? Um, and if they're not, if they're more bespoke, then that might be the, be the question whether it's worth doing a SaaS service portal, although you might still want to have a generic one where at least you'll be able to collect information from, from them on a very bare basic level. Um, can you also define your business processes around the services you want to offer from the portal? Business processes, as you know, at least in support works, are going to be, have to be defined for each service that you offer. And these are basically the driving force behind the ticket once it's raised in support works from the analyst perspective. So it is really useful to have at least, if nothing else, the out-of-the-box offering that you can get from support works to implement at least for your services. But if you can make it more customized to yourselves, that makes more sense to do so at this point. You'll have to then think about it. How would you want to process the incoming requests from the portal? There's a couple of ways you can do this from SupportWorks. You can either get it automated, i.e. the ticket would already be raised and already sitting in there logged and ready for you to actually work with. Or you can get it for manual processing. Well, that means that actually the ticket will be in the system, but it wouldn't have been decided whether it's going to be a service request or an incident change request and so on and so forth. So that will mean you need to do a bit of a manual intervention from Dallas' perspective to pick up those tickets and then um, vet them as they come through rather than having been already logged and um, started off in the system for support works. Some other considerations. As I said, you have to remember to think about your marketing kind of um, perspective of how you're going to roll this out to the clients. Bearing in mind, and there's many people going to be out there who would have not necessarily used support work staff service portal, so they might need some kind of a guidance on how to use this, where to find things, um, even though it's quite self-explanatory and fairly straightforward, they still need to have a buy-in from them, especially some people who may not be using technology all that often in their lives, they might be a bit more reluctant to log on to a computer and actually go online. Um, need to bear in mind the time and the effort the implementation will take. It's all nice and well that you would like to have a self-service portal, but you will have to bear in mind who are the people going to actually do this implementation. The very chances are that you're going to pull off people from other projects or from their normal daily tasks, and therefore you need to bear in mind that it's not going to happen overnight. You'll have to possibly put some people on resources specifically for the self-service portal to be implemented or otherwise you have to bear in mind that it might take longer because they'll have to do their daily tasks still as they um, proceed with this. You'll then have to think about what kind of metrics you want to use to monitor the um, use of the self-service portal. I mean, at the end of the day, you really are implementing here something that should bring benefits to your business, but the only way you can find that out what the benefits are if you actually define what metrics you want to use for this, any KPIs, any kind of um, um, reporting that you can think of that will be useful for you to see just how much of an uptake of the SaaS service portal have actually raised. Simple reporting like for example just checking how many tickets have been raised from SaaS service portal and support works you can write that out quite easily um, and that should at least give you an indicator as to how well it's been used. Um, then also, as you know, there are some knowledge-based articles that you have in Support Works which you can publish onto the staff service portal itself. So you really want to think about what kind of articles you'd want people to see and um, possibly even giving them the chance to actually browse through them before sending your request. Therefore, again, reducing the amount of time the ser your service desk might have to spend on going through tickets with the clients if they can actually help themselves by reading a knowledge-based article they're even better. Um, and finally, you will have to think about who are your key team 
people who are going to implement this, as I already mentioned, they will have to then think about their roles as to how much time and effort they're going to spend and whether they'll be able to do it at all. So you really have to give it a good consideration who your team members will be for creating the portal. A pretty important um, thing to remember here is by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Indeed, it cannot be stressed to the importance of it that you have to be prepared and understand what you're taking on and really plan out what you must in order to succeed. Um, as with any other projects, um, it also requires you to really prepare yourself and actually think through all the possibilities and all the angles before take on the self-service portal. I don't want to scare you off with this because obviously it now sounds like a massive um, sort of a take on. It isn't, but it still need to be considered um, well from all aspects. Now, a few things that you really do need for your preparations. First of all, um, I mentioned earlier that you really need to think about your services. Um, these are the repeatable offerings. They might be in place already. If you already have your services and you already have rolled out and not just using incident management, perfect. At least you've got that already there. But if not, then it's a perfect opportunity for you to think about your service portfolio. Now, also, just because you have services already defined doesn't mean you might want to publish them all on the portal. So again, if you do have probably, say, 50, you might only want to publish about 10 or 20 of them. So you need to think about which are those services that you will want to publish on the service portal. Business processes. Now, these obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the services cannot work without a business process. So you can either create a new one or you need to review an existing one out of the box or review the existing one that you already have in there in the system and maybe use that. It's really up to you, but it's another um, a preparation consideration you need to bear in mind. SLAs. Um, it's a bit of a dreaded part. <laughs> Obviously, most people find this a bit um, the, one of the most difficult things to set up. But you, you think about um, the different offerings for different services, how are you all going to get your SLAs into the service portal? Are you going to drive these via the customer's SLAs, or are you planning to drive it through the services SLAs? Um, so it's just a consideration to go through when you're setting up your services that that's correctly set up, and I will show you a bit more in detail as to where these are kept. Wizards, I've already spoken to about this earlier in terms of the language as to um, what sort of language to keep it and um, how to keep it so sort of friendly to the clients. You'll need to think about what questions you will want to ask from the users. Um, obviously, if you're not quite ready with starting off with 5, 10, 20 services, you can just start off with a simple generic service, at least with a couple of questions. It's better to start small and then grow as you go when you realize that what kind of services you can offer. But if you have got the whole service offerings already in place, you'll then really have to think about what kind of information you need to gather from the clients um, in order for you to be able to process their request or even incidents. You'll need to think about what kind of options they might have or branching, so to speak, over the visits, i.e. sending them on one route or another one. Um, and keep it very simple and possibly keep it as short as possible. Nothing more frustrating from a customer's perspective if they have to click through 15 pages of a self-service portal. Chances are after the sixth one you're going to lose them. So you really want to think about it. Does it, is it really necessary to push them through there because um, even though I know how good it is and how full of information there it is, people will just be um, reluctant to use it and much rather lift a phone receiver. Um, the next thing is the subscriptions. Um, you will need to think about who will have access to the portal. That's a bare basic level of who can actually access it. But within that, you also then think about what services those people will be able to um, have access to. Think about it that the services can be subscribed to on a customer level, on a department level, and on an organizational level. So any of those kind of different um, sort of settings or levels you can think about you might be able to give access to the whole of the organization of a customer you're supporting, but only certain departments will have different access to certain different services that you offer. So that's something to, to bear in mind. Also, how will these services will be subscribed to? But you need to think about it that services subscriptions usually a manual process that you'll have to go and maintain um, 
during the course of using um, SportWorks because as you get new customers or new organizations come on board or even new departments possibly, you'll need to be able to subscribe to people um, to these services as and when required. Further to this, you can also op um, offer an option on the portal to get people to request a subscription to certain services. If that is the case, then that gives you an extra kind of a thing to think about because as they request access to it, that will raise a service ticket and then you'll have to then manually go and add them to the subscription as, um, as, um, as needed. Plan. That is pretty important and that's one of capitals. So as sure you write up, you have a plan and then um, <clears throat> you plan to achieve what you want to implement. Um, really think about that your go live date and focus yourself on that because that's going to be your driving um, and try to think of a, a date that's kind of achievable as opposed to think well we're going to go in there within three weeks and all going to be whistles and bells um, it's better to have a bit of a more delayed um, expectation than trying to push too soon of course decide on the team members who are going to do the work and implementation and also think about how they're going to report back during the implementation and even put in milestones to track your progress so that you don't go off track and um, carry on on the track of implementing. That brings me to yet another quote. It's going to be hopefully the last one. Don't want to bore you with this. Uh, is this the end or is it just the beginning? Um, well, once you've gone live with Surf Service Portal um, and you're all the other customers' happy days, you really need to think about does it mean the end or is it just the beginning? As I mentioned earlier, you need to think about what kind of things that will come next once you have done your implementation. First thing is important is measure your success. So how do you plan to measure your success? Again, define your KPIs um, and also you will think about have to think about what kind of continuous feedback you can get back from your customers. After all, you are implementing it for them. You probably will find it useful to get their input on this one just in case you didn't quite get it right the first time around, they might be able to come up with some very useful information for you. And also then think about what you're going to do with all that data that comes back to you, what you're going to actually do about it. Future plans is the other thing to bear in mind. Um, this is more to do with updating your portal and adding more services later on. As I said, it does not really make sense to try to roll out all your services, possibly all 50 of them all at once, it's a cumbersome task and the best thing to do really is to start small. So obviously once people get used to it and you start wanting to offer more services, you'll need to update the portal and more services as you go along. So those are the future plans you need to bear in mind. And again, you need to think about it, who's going to manage those things? Who's going to manage the subscriptions? Someone will have to be in place. It may not be a, a full-time job by far, this really is not one of those. But your admins for support works will have to keep an eye on this and will be something that will have to be added to their queue of things to deal with. Feedback and continuous improvement. Well, don't just sit back and do nothing, basically. You want to find out how could you make things even better. So you really should seek feedback from your customers and even the service desk analysts. At the end of the day, these two um, bunch of people that will be using the self service portal mostly because the analysts will get the tickets from the portal, so therefore they need to know if they're gathering the right kind of information from the portal. So really important to consult them and come back to them and ask them, is this really how you want it to work? Maybe we could tweak things on it to make it a bit better. And remember that input is important. Um, think about how you're going to implement those changes, if any, and uh, again, think about who will maintain and update the portal. Right, that's going to bring me to the end of the half, first half of the session. So I'm going to actually now go and dive into ITSM 3.5, which is an instance I have got on my um, system here. So I'm just going to exit out of this um, presentation. And if you bear with me a second, I'll then take you into SportWorks, which I'm already in, as you can see. But I'm going to take it from the start beginning so we know where we all are. Excuse me about that one. I think I lost the connection, so bear with me a sec. If I have, I'm just going to log back in again. We'll find that soon enough. So, in terms of support works, um, how do you all set this up? Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, the first thing you need to bear in mind is the services to make sure that you've got them all in place and they set up as they should be. So, God's willing, 
I'll be able to see what I need to see. If not, it will shout at me again. Okay, so I'm going to log out and log back in again. And hopefully it'll be fine. Just a second. Oh, someone else is logged into the system. Not really sure how that's possible. try to possibly log on to a different instance just so it can carry on. Apologies for this slight like, technical issue, everybody. Um, we're obviously working on it, and we'll get back to you, and uh, hopefully Veronica will be logged in shortly, so please bear with us. Apologies about this. Um, rather than trying to sort that issue out, I have actually opened up another sandbox on my um, machine, which is not quite set up as I would hope to, but uh, still it gives us um, something to work with and um, be able to show you what I'm hoping to, see, to show you. So, a couple of places to have a look at. Obviously, this is going to be your self-service portal. It's going to look something similar to this. Um, and this is what it looks like once you log on. So if you're using ITSM and you're using... Oh, not showing. Okay, I think I'm sharing this desktop now, so you should be able to see it now, one would like to hope. Okay, so... The self-service portal looks something like this if you're using a fairly latest version of ITSM. Once you're logged on, you'll be able to see your services and how to request support and so on and so forth. Um, the um, buttons on the left-hand side actually are the same kind of things that you get in icons in the top. And if you go into any of the services um, or the My Services area, you should be able to list out the services that are available to you. So before I dive into that, I wanted to really just show you what kind of things and what areas need to set up in SupportWorks itself for it to um, come alive and obviously be able to use it. So just to come back to it again, is the services that you need to have a look at. And first of all, we need to make sure that you have your service categories in place. Just a quick show, I'm not going to go really deep in detail because that would be a services kind of um, a webinar and this more more service portal. So therefore, um, I'm just going to uh, quickly browse through this area. So you really do need some categories being set up in your services in order for this to work. Um, and once you've got those um, um, set up, then you can go into setting up the actual services. Now, you probably will be familiar with this if you already have used, have used services before. So apologies if I'm covering something you already understand. Um, 
So if I'm just picking up any kind of um, service that I can um, make available here, um, as I said, for services, the first thing that's important is that it's already set up and that you have some service levels or SLAs um, in place for this actual offering. Um, I mentioned earlier that you need to think about the, um, the actual subscriptions to this service. So you need to think about who are the people you want to subscribe against it on an organization level or customer level or even department level. So these are the options you can choose from to subscribe people to a service. Now you see two different buttons here, the edit request form and an edit support form. These are the two buttons that correlate or correspond to the support me and the raise request buttons on the self service portal. So depending on which one you go down on, you're configuring that kind of option. So if I do the raise request, then I would have to go the edit request form. And if you notice here, this is the one where you can define where the incoming self service portal tickets going to land and who's going to actually get it. So you're going to get the support group and the owner if you wish to make it a specific um, analyst name. The business process you'll have to define here as to what is going to be kicked off at the point when the ticket is actually logged. And if you notice, there's a wizard here. So I'm going to take you back to the wizards in a minute to show you this is how it's linked. Basically, once you created your wizard, which is the front end, what you see questions-wise in terms of the customer's perspective, this is where you link them to the actual um, services at this point. You can profile some tickets if you wish. That would be this option. And of course, you can define the impact and urgency. Actually, you will have to define it at this point because they are required fields. You might also want to um, consider the SLAs. And as I said, that's quite another um, webinar as well because SLAs can be set in so many different places in support works. But this is one of them. If you wish to present the SLA in the self service portal, please bear in mind the SLAs will always show up on the end of the tickets. That would take customization to take that bit off from um, the wizards. So your customers always will see the SLAs at the end of the end of the um, uh, ticket before they actually submit it. Unless, like I said, there was some customization in, put in place to try to hide those uh, pages. So here you can decide whether to actually present an SLA from a service, meaning as you know, you can create an SLA and um, hook it to this actual service, or you can get an SLA on the subscriptions for these organizational customers or departments, so you can use that. And you can also get it to have a look at what's in the subscription. It can find one, good. If it doesn't, then it proceeds on to with the one that the service has defined for the SLA. Um, you probably want to use the priority as well, unless you actually have a default priority and set up. Um, and there's a few options on this as well as to which one you can get. If you want to use the impact and urgency that's specified above, i.e. in these two fields up here, then you would use this. Um, and if you want the customers to actually define the impact and urgency, you'd use the second question or the second um, option for that. Okay, so let me take you to the business processes just so I can go down on my list of the bits that you need to bear in mind. Let me go back to here. Business processes, they live in the general settings or managed settings and process settings area. And you'll then probably want to pick up the services. Given that the self service portal is driven by services, mostly the service processes are the ones that are going to be picked up and you'll be using. Um, we have got some come out of the system, out of the uh, box, so you can use either that service um, sort of, um, process or you can create your own. Um, again, I'm not going to go deep into detail because this would be another workshop, um, but just bear in mind that you would want to pick up one at least by default um, or make one a bit more um, relevant to your business. Um, SLAs I've already have mentioned, but I will just come back to that very quickly. So on the services, when you're defining SLAs, <coughs> you can get it to drive from the service levels, i.e anything that you picked from here, or you can drive the SLAs from the subscriptions and revenues. So if you go into an actual subscribe person, you can have a look at the available service levels and even subscribe to the service levels. So this is where you would set those things up when you're setting up a person that's going to be subscribed to a service. 
Okay, so let's go back to the wizards and show you one of those. Bear in mind, this wasn't the one I made earlier, so I haven't got my blue badge for this one, I'm afraid. Um, so if we go to general settings, the third tab in is the one where self-service wizards live. So if I pick one up, um, you should be able to see that um, it comes up with the wizard name, you need to define the title. And these two areas that this refer to is basically where the default information is going to go into once the ticket is logged. And if you already know somewhat around SupportWorks and understand which field relates to what field in SupportWorks or which names, you'll know that the update db details or this one is the area when all the information from the actual self-service portal wizard going to be squirted into. That also means that you may also want to fill up some other fields instead and say for example you want to put in some other details information say you want to fill in the impact and urgency that comes in from another um, from, from the actual um, wizard so I'll talk to you about that shortly as well but for now if you want to keep all your um, questions and answers coming in one place then just leave it default as it is set up in here okay so within the steps, steps I'll think about them as the pages that actually go through in SupportWorks as um, wizard and each page will have different questions that you might want to post for them to fill in. It's quite a friendly way of setting it up because you can get different types of um, questions that you can pose about a system. You can offer just a simple text box or a multi-line one that will allow people to put in more than one line of text. You have the radio boxes and check boxes available to you and you also have the select boxes as well as some date ranges and option selectors. Things to bear in mind, um, the prefix question here is really useful obviously if you want to bring in the information then rather than just bring in the answers you probably want to pose them before with the question. Especially if you're asking a yes or no question because it's not going to be much useful for the analyst to come in seeing a yes or a no and they don't understand what the question was for. So that's what you would take to bring in the questions as well as the, as well as the answers. Mandatory is self-explanatory. If you want to make a field mandatory and don't let person to actually um, forward the page from there, that's where you would tick. And hide question is very useful if you're going to post some questions that would drive possibly your wizard in a different direction. For example, if you want to cheat the system, this is a nice little nugget information, as you know, normally you would be able to raise a service call or service request or an incident ticket from here. But nothing stopping you to actually change, for example, the call class. That's something you wouldn't want to actually ask the person, but they might want to raise a change request. You know that they want to raise a change request because they've gone into this particular wizard. You can set the call class to be a change request type, and that's a hidden question because you don't need to ask the client to answer that for you. So that's about that. Um, if you're going a bit more fancy and I want to actually put in some kind of a select list, I'm going to just pick up one here just so you can see what it looks like. That will populate the choices of tab for me where I can either enter in the choices manually one by one or I can do a bit more clever thing and actually hook into one of the tables and fields and so on and so forth from the back end of support works and pull them and populate them out in front for me rather than me having to actually type them out. Good thing about that is that if the system changes in the back end you don't need to then do the work again because it should be refreshing itself um, automatically from there. So let me go back to um, the uh, subscriptions of the actual services because this is the area where you have to think about as to who you're going to make the services available or who you're going to make the actual um, self-service portal available. So I've covered this, this um, subscriptions already from the services port point of view, but you also have um, in the customers area to see what they have access to. If you have a look at the service desk access, you will see the self-service rights. So these are the basic rights to what they can do once they log on, or can they actually log on. Obviously, allow access means they can just have a visibility of the self-service portal, or they can log requests, and so on and so forth. Now, if you wish to bring in information en masse as to what uh, level of um, access configuration level they have, you can do that um, by setting um, 
a specific sort of a counter because all these fields actually add up to a, a specific sort of a number a counter that we can um, work out from an Excel sheet for you. Um, more than happy to send this to anyone if you want to have this, and you can put this into your import um, sort of scripts and as you find it fit or see it fit. Okay, um, self-service passwords will be written, uh, driven here. Again, this can be pre-populated um, as when you are importing your customers first time around, or otherwise you can actually uh, set this up to be um, an AD password um, as you see it fits, so that would aid the single sign-on if you have internal self-service portal. Let me think through. Um, now the actual self-service uh, setup, so the setup for that, the administration for this is self-service, uh, managed self-service configurations area. As you can see, there's quite a few bits that you have to set up in order for it to work, so bear with me, we'll, we'll get there. First things first, I want to give it the self-service name. And then secondary, if you have more than one data dictionary, you really need to think about which data dictionary you're going to want to publish or want it to receive the actual services and service requests from. I have the usually default. You probably will have a default as well. But if you have other HR or FM Desk or various other ones as well implemented, you probably want to think about which one is the one that you want to push out. Bearing in mind, we have had some customizations requested before when you want to have more than one data dictionary put into one um, self-service portal. It is possible, but it is a customizable piece of work. Local call settings, this is what kind of um, calls, you get when they arrive into the system, what type of call class they're going to have, are they going to be raised as a service request or incident and so, so forth, this is where you send that up. And of course the service desk as to who's going to be assigned this to. Um, final little things that you can also set up here is whether you want to show the hot known issues on enable knowledge base or person knowledge base search on the self service portal. This force KB search will really allow um, or rather push the clients to search the knowledge base before they're able to submit a ticket for your attention. So that's that area to cover. Um, finally, there was some, some more setups, but that's more on the actual um, server side setup. So I'm not going to go into that at this moment. But let me see if I can log a ticket, and I'm hoping this can actually work, given that this was the actual um, thing that I haven't tested. So, fingers crossed, and we'll see what happens. If it all goes terribly wrong, you can blame me, and I'll blame someone else. Okay, so, give some... Um, just so it's not all googly gook. And in the business case, well, I'm going to have to just speed it up, otherwise we might be sitting here for me a very long time. Okay. More adverts, okay, and submit. Okay, so that shouldn't have been logged the ticket for me in my system. If all is well, I should be able to actually see it. You probably know how this works already, but oh no, it doesn't. It's not quite set up properly, so I won't be able to show you. I was hoping that I would be able to, but that's the basic, the bare basics of how to set up the um, support work system. So what I'm going to do, um, rather than going on forwards for more, I'm going to ask you if you have any questions, um, and if you could kindly pose it and write it in for me. Uh, to be able to answer. I will try to cover as many as I can do um, and hopefully you have some things to ask of me.
thank you for everyone that started typing in. So um, I'll sort of start off um, and see how many we can get through. Um, any that we don't manage to cover, we will obviously um, follow up with the individual after each session. So um, the first one is, can the heading names be changed on the service desk, i.e. my service, etc.? Okay, let me just see if I understand this correctly. Would you mind rereading it for me, Anna? Certainly. Can the heading names be changed on the service desk, i.e. my service, etc.? I think you mean in these um, headings. Um, it's a PHP script, so as long as you have got some PHP knowledge in-house, you should be able to change it yourself. Otherwise, you'll have to um, contact us for some customization requests. It's quite simple, so it's not, not um, a very difficult one to do. Okay, so the next one is, can you also let us know how to change the SLAs? How to change the SLAs. Um, Okay, I can show you as to where to actually set up SLAs. Service level agreements are managed in here. You actually define your service level agreements in this particular area. You can add them in. Um, I don't really want to go too deep into SLAs, but yeah, basically this is the area where you would set up new SLAs. Bearing in mind you need to then define priorities as well, and there's two ways of doing it. Either you define the SLA here and then and add record and then come back to open up and get back to the priorities here. Let me just set up one right, as well. If I can type. No, it doesn't time to type for some reason. There it goes. Okay. So you can set as SLA up to um, and how you wish to be, either corporate or service or whatever it would be set an owner and you will have to um, set a business owner as well. This will have to be one of your customers. Ideally, you probably want to set up some of your analysts as well as customers within the system just so they can own uh, sort of um, an SLA and so, so forth. In this case, if you want to set this to be a service SLA, I'd set it to service. And if you see if I add record and then go back in again, the priorities then becomes available. So I can then add in the priorities at this point. Otherwise, I can also reuse some priorities or define them here in advance and then link them into the SLA. Once you've got the SLA and the priorities, you can then link them into certain, the, the actual service, which I'll just show you one more time. So if I find a service that you wish to use, go to your service levels and say add, then you'll have the list of services that are still available for you to pick from to actually put in there. Bear in mind, I haven't got a priority on mine because I didn't set up one for the test that I've just created. No, for that answers questions. Thank you. Um, on to the next one is, how is the ticket logged confirmation statement, which appears as the last step to logging a self-service form, configured, and am I able to configure this myself? I believe you're meaning this is the one where you get asked um, the confirmation of what the questions were and what the answers are. Um, and I believe... This lives in the actual wizard itself. So let me just see if it was here, but I think it's going to be in the wizard itself. Bear with me a second. Okay, so this place summary before submission is the one that you want to tick if you want to include all those questions at the end before you submit it. Unfortunately, you can't um, actually change it because obviously what it does, it just literally looks at all the questions and the answers that you've gathered and then squirts it in there. So depending on what steps and what questions you asked in your wizard, that's what's going to drive it. So you can customize it depending on obviously the questions you're asking. Thank you. I'm sorry, my, um, the next one is, if we were to make changes to the appearance of the self-service portal through PHP editing, would it still be supported by Hornbill? Um, yes, we would normally support it. We would suggest that we obviously 
um, create this for you just to be sure that it's definitely how it should be. Um, but as long as it's not broken, there's no reason why we shouldn't support it. Okay, let me see if there's any more questions that I can um, find in here. What kind of rep reporting would you recommend for measuring the success of the portal, i.e. is it possible to report of the usage of the specific self-service forms? Um, well, as you know, as long as you have the information captured in support works as to uh, what service it will be, I would suggest you would literally not so much report on the self-service forms, as so much report on the type of service. And then you also have a secondary kind of a thing that you would drill down on the self-service or where, where it comes from. You can get that information make available on support works as to where the actual um, ticket has been logged from and that would uh, pop up as a self-service kind of option. So therefore, you would write your report with those two kind of criteria in there as a one way to um, drive it and actually get the reporting out of that. Let me see. And also, with regards to the self-service selector list, is there a way to force these to show in alphabetical order? Currently, with one of our wizards, when displaying a drop-down of the site locations, there are there shows as a random order. Yes, unfortunately, I've noticed that as well. Um, I don't know the way around it at the moment. Um, I can certainly look into it. As far as I know, it's something you might have to live with um, as it is currently. Is there an easy way of simplifying the appearance of the self-service portal? Our customers often comment that it feels overwhelming and resort to using email instead. Um, if you mean by collapsing these fields and for on the form, let me just show you. I have been asked this before as well. When you actually go to the services and you'll see you have to expand and expand and expand to get to the actual thing you want to get to. Um, unfortunately, this is driven by the self-service kind of um, or the service categories. So if you remember that when you set up a service, you have to set up the categories beforehand. So let me just show you that bit. So these categories, whatever you have defined here and whatever subcategories you have defined here are actually shown on the self-service portal and it's a rather difficult kind of customization to just get rid of as such. Um, so unfortunately the answer as a straight out is, is a no, um, but with some customization depends exactly what you want to achieve, it's possible but it's definitely not something that you can just configure out of the box as it is. Uh, in service data form, can you expand impact and urgency? Service data form. Um, I'm not entirely sure what you meant by that, so if you don't mind posing that question sometime later, and I'll look into that as well for you. We can get your um, relationship manager to follow up and uh, help you get a bit more clarity on getting that one answered. Um, we have another one which is what kind of reporting would you recommend for measuring the success of the portal? Um, you know, is it possible to report on the usage of specific self-service forms? I already answered that one particular. Sorry. <laughs> too many that have come in. Okay, let me see if I can see some more. Uh, apologies if I won't be able to answer all of these because many of you have actually posed many questions. So if you don't get your answers now, I promise you your relationship manager will come back to you and actually will come um, answer all those for you via us one way or another. Um, Are you able to confirm um, what version of self-service we're currently on? That all that you've I'm on, I yeah. mean, right. um, I can show you the service I'm using currently. Just bear with me a second, let me just close things out of here. So I am using, sorry, a bit of a hack here, just to sort of check exactly the version I have. So I'm using ITSM and 3.5.0. And this is not the latest one, I think they're, they're the latest one, 
Um, but the reason I'm showing this because some people may still be on this version, not quite a brand new one yet and haven't heard. The other system that I had set up obviously was on that system, but as technical difficulties they are, that's, that's just the way we have to live with. Is there any sort of overview of the sort of updates from the two different versions at all? So obviously, what is there any key functions that are majorly different? We have got some kind of a documentation around this, I believe, and in fact the release notes will tell you more about it if there's any differences and changes in between the two. Um, I can't think of anything top of my head straight away as to what is the one that actually kind of stands out. So just double checking that we have answered any others that have come in at last minute. I think we covered pretty much all the questions that I can see. Some people have said that they're unable to hear the audio, but that must have been at the beginning of the actual thing. So I think I'm going to close the session at this point, and thank you very much for all your attendance. And as I said, if you still have some more questions, you're more than welcome to pose them to us or send it to our relationship managers, and we'll come back to you responding to them as and, um, as and when we're able to. Thank you so much again, and um, hand you back to Anna so he can, she can say goodbye as well. Thank you, Veronica, and thank you, everyone, for um, bearing with us when we had, obviously, that slight technical fault in the middle. Um, but as Veronica mentioned, if you do have any other questions that we sort of didn't manage to uh, find um, or that you didn't um, have time to post a question on, do obviously email myself or the relationship manager, and we will make sure that that is followed up accordingly. Um, but thank you very much. We hope to see you on the next Hornbill Academy on the 20th of November. Well, we will be looking into Hornbill reporting. But thank you once again, and have a good day. Bye-bye.